Ming Lava, welcome to MITV special show, Perspectives. For this show, we have invited our guest of speaker, Xia Wu Yijian. And to kick off our show, we are going to discuss about the, for the sake of future generations. Ming Lava, Xia. Ming Lava. Yeah. So why must we shape them? Well, you know, Myanmar has become the country from, from being a country with the highest potential to now a country that looks like a whim. Yeah, because 70 years ago, right, we are the, probably the richest in ASEAN. Now, in, the, in 2017, we become the poorest in ASEAN. Right, even when you look at 2013, that we are the country with the most potential, most beloved in the world. Now we are shunned by everybody in the world, and we are being criticized, we are being bullied. Yeah, so from a country with, you know, 70 years ago with the best in education to healthcare to, you know, pub uh, public housing to visitors, to the current situation right now where we are at the back end of every measurable statistics. Now, when you look at tourism, we have the le least number of tourists arriving to our country, right? And in the, for, even for the, what are we selling to the tourists? We, uh, let's say we are selling our culture. What is our culture, right? Our culture, you, if you look at your Facebook comments, that is our culture. We become so banned. Yeah, that's why we need to shape up. If not, we go down the road, will be in very deep, deep trouble. You know, 20, 30, 40 years down the road will be really bad. Mm -hmm. So, how are we getting bullied, please? Explain. Well, yeah, we, we are getting bullied everywhere because of the fact that we become, you know, a very weak country, right? So we become bullied, for example, we have been bullied by ASEAN. Even the smallest country in ASEAN, they are closing our bank accounts, they are interfering in our state of affairs. Yeah, can you imagine, I tell you, how you should arrange your furniture in your house, mm -hmm. right? How you should, which side your bed should fa be facing, you will not be pleased, right? Mm -hmm. Because that is your house. It's up to you to how you want to arrange, where you want to put your chair, where you want to do a table. I have no right to come and tell you mm -hmm. where, where you should put your table or chairs or, you know, dining set. Now, they are telling us mm -hmm. how we should do things in our own country. Mm -hmm. That's how we are getting, getting interfered. Our sovereignty is being affected. Even the poorest country in so-called wanting to join ASEAN at their national day events, right, they are inviting anti-government terrorist organization to attend their functions. Mm -hmm. That is an insult to us. Mm -hmm. right? The official government, they don't invite. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the terrorist supporting government, they invite to them. Mm -hmm. That means they don't show any respect to Myanmar as a country. Mm -hmm. That is really bad. Mm -hmm. right? As another example, you know, Myanmar bank accounts. Mm -hmm. are being closed, that counts on Myanmar companies, Myanmar nationals, Myanmar citizens, uh, or foreign businessmen doing business in Myanmar, they are getting closed in Singapore. Mm -hmm. You will see a recent uh, story by the M M Myanmar Airways International, accounts getting closed by UOB, United Overseas Bank of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Right, so yeah, so, so that, that all these type of things. And plus, you know, we may have money in uh, an overseas bank account, like in US or Singapore, and their they are, they are accounts are being you know, we can use that money, the government's money, right? The government has some money, uh, uh, I think uh, near a billion, around a billion in the U.S., but we cannot use that, mm -hmm. right? How can our money, our own money, we cannot use? Mm -hmm. Because we are being, being bullied, right? And plus, you know, uh, the, the recent one ambassador come here to Myanmar, the first day that she arrived, she go and pay respect at the grave of a terrorist, a known terrorist, right, who was, you know, who was, Punish and uh, who's uh, who who got capital punishment? Right? He's going to pay respect. He he was a terrorist that killed kill lots of people. Mm -hmm. So that that type of you know uh, disrespect that outside people are showing to us at this point of time. That's how we have been bullied. And if we extrapolate that to the future, right, thirty years down the road, forty years down the road, mm -hmm. if you are a Myanmar leader, you go to the international event. They may even be kicking us at the back. Why? Because we lost so much of our standing. Yeah. That's, so that's, 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 that's so for the, as uh, we have already mentioned about the, the topic of this discussion, um, for the sake of future generations, what are the five essential things we must do now? 
Yeah, obviously, yeah, the, 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 they are, I thought about it quite a fair bit. Yeah, I study the economy and the country and what is needed for the country to grow, uh, country to be you know, at par, keep abreast of the international uh, countries, other countries, right? and I come up with the fine. You know, because we have gone so low that, you know, if you, if you are being now, if you are along here, <laughs> if you can see from their grave, they'll be so upset. <laughs> that They'll be so upset because at that time we are very strong. We are the strongest in Asia. We're invading other countries. If not, I'm not saying that we should invade, but, you know, nobody dared to insult uh, the Myanmar civilization. Uh, that, that, that's what is happening. You know? And so we have been uh, relaxing and basking in the past glories that, you know, we become very complacent. Right, and then you know, uh, uh, some of the civil servants also become corrupt instead of becoming role models, right? And then some of the you know uh, proficiency, expertise, and skills uh, they they have to be valued instead of valuing them. You know, uh, they took a back seat, right? And you know, uh, fighting spirit, right, is frowned upon. Yeah, you know? rather people have to comply with this, comply with that, right? You got to have a brave enough people here uh, with a fighting spirit. Right, so in favor of being submissive. So that has this cancer culture has spread at the international level that, you know, oh, hence we have the current midget status in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have already mentioned about our complacency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's talk about one by one, starting okay. with the uh, power issue. Yeah, correct. So there are five issues. Yeah, the first, uh, this, you, we address this five issue right now, straight away, then we'll be, we'll be a lot better in 10 years, 20 years down the road. The first issue, as you mentioned, is power, right? As long as we don't have enough electricity, we'll always be a poor country, a third world country, right? The country that everybody looks down. Yeah, so we have to address that, right? Uh, so, you know, because some of, the, some of our leaders also, we have, uh, not everyone, some of them have a knack for, you know, delaying things. Oh, let's leave it for the next government. Let's leave it for the next people. Let's leave it for others. With that, we cannot leave for others anymore. The power issue we have to address now. Whatever has happened in the past, we don't talk about. We talk about the present, for the future generation. Right in the present, we have to do. We have to bring back the hydropower, build a big dam. Right. Plus, we have to. Be, it has to be backed up by nuclear, mm -hmm. nuclear power. Mm -hmm. Only then we will be electricity sufficient in 10 years' time, mm -hmm. right? That is a must because we need every electricity for every single industry, mm -hmm. everything that you do. All the children need electricity. Mm -hmm. All the housewives need electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. As you have mentioned about the nuclear, uh, because our Myanmar people have the mindset that when you uh, people discuss about nuclear, that that is a nuclear bomb and that they have a negative mindset. So uh, please elaborate about the positive uh, usefulness of nuclear energy. Yeah, you know, Japan is running on nuclear fuel. Yeah. You know, the, 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 Russia has nuclear plants. Not every day that you know, uh, you have more chances of dying from airplane crash than uh, any nuclear factory, you know, uh, going haywire and nuclear factory exploding. There are very safe nuclear factories all around the world, right? China is using that. And right? India also. Yeah, so you, we, we, can, we can safely use that. It's not using our own engineers. We can uh, team up with the foreign people. Mm -hmm. You know, foreign companies have foreign countries that are friendly to us to set up the nuclear plant together and run together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have to take the risk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you cannot listen so much to the, you know, what is that, social environment, all these uh, factors, right? The, the think about the China Three Gorges Dam. They, they move millions of people out of the way. Mm -hmm. And now China is super, electricity is extra surplus. Mm -hmm. Right? We need to be, uh, the government have to be brave enough to take this type of decisive action mm -hmm. so that the future generations will be taken care of. Mm -hmm. right? If we delay and leave it for the next government still, we'll have the same problem. We'll forever be poor. We'll be forever be bullied by everyone. Mm -hmm. Do you want that? Mm -hmm. So if you don't want that, there's no alternative. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no more electricity failure. <laughs> yeah, correct, correct. We have to, we have to have, you, we are, our electricity supply has to be a lot, a lot more than what we are going to use in 10 years down the road. Mm -hmm. So, that is 
the first yes. point. Mm. And then the next point, uh, so about, how about the money making? Yeah, you, do, you have to, just like in real life, if, you are, if I'm rich and you are poor, I will forever bully you. Do you accept that, right? Mm -hmm. Right, the rich always sort of bully the poor. Right, because that's the thing, that's how the world works. So the rich country will always bully the poorer countries. So that's how the world works. So we, we have to survive in that world, right? So, so what does it take for us to get rich? In order to get rich, it's quite simple. You must build or you must make something. How does China become rich, super rich? Because it is a factory to the whole world. They build everything for the world. Right, so we must build, we must make, we must produce something. We can produce agricultural goods, we can produce uh, livestock, we can produce, you know, clothes, we can produce whatever. Uh, actually, Myanmar has a rich natural resources and also a rich uh, agricultural uh, producers. So I think uh, Myanmar has a uh, lack of uh, processing technologies, I think. Well, technology is one thing, but even if you're producing the raw things, even if, for example, you're producing coconuts or you're producing pigs, you need to make sure that you produce more. That's the only way to get rich, right? If one year you produce, let's say, one million coconut, next year you're going to think of producing 1.5 million, mm -hmm. right? That's how you're going to get rich and that's going to get to the next step. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about, you know, how to increase the coconut production from 1 million to 1.5 million, then you start to think of the technology. Yeah, then how you want to use that technology or some scientific means so that the plant can, the tree can produce more coconuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know, the thing is, your objective is to produce more. Mm -hmm. When you produce more, you automatically think of the technology. Mm -hmm. Even if you're selling pigs or pork, you want to produce more, then you think of technology. Yeah, so then, then you start thinking of the technology and medicine and what things they need. So you will constantly continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. The main thing what I'm trying to say is you need to start producing and making things. Even if you are uh, printing newspaper or making journals or building buildings, that is, you are producing something, mm -hmm. right? You cannot just be sitting at a tea shop and talking and, you know, become poesa all the time. You will never be rich. The country will never be rich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the second step. You must, everybody must work hard to make, produce or build something. Mm -hmm. So that is the second point. Uh, yeah. yes. So creating wolf warriors, as we have already discussed in recent discussions, um, what about creating wolf warriors? Yeah, Guru, we in that in that case we need to copy the you know what uh, the the China and India uh, how they are handling at the international stage. They have people who are not afraid to speak out to the uh, at the international press uh, press call or at the international meeting about when somebody said wrong things about their own country, right? So that is that type of oh, warrior is what we need. Right, as Reagan has said, the future belongs to the brave. Mm -hmm. Right, if you just sit behind your desk, you occupy a position, you don't want to do anything because you, want to, you don't want to upset the, the people on top of you. Right, you just want to hang on to your own power. If that is the case, you will never be, the country will never be prosperous. Mm -hmm. The country will always be a wimp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody will, nobody will respect you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we need a, we need a, a younger generation of leaders who will stand up for the country and fight for the country and be counted mm -hmm. to bring Myanmar up together. Mm. So, uh, by the way, how about the wall? Yeah, that is item number four, the wall. <laughs> uh, Trump is building a wall, right? Israelis have already built a wall. We also need a wall. Mm -hmm. Where is the wall? The wall in the northern side mm -hmm. between Bangladesh and ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because we always, you know, since uh, after 2010, 2012 onwards, we always have this Bengali issue, where the other countries call it Rohingya's issue, right? We always have the issue. And we, that issue is not, and it's not, it has not ended yet. It will continue for future generations. The only way to end is to cut the migration by building the wall, right? Maybe 40 feet or whatever. It's not that there is no entry. We have proper entry uh, with the gate and all this thing. But all the areas where there is no gate, we got to commit money and build a wall. I was even thinking that you know we should collect like every Myanmar citizen two dollars mm -hmm. to contribute to the wall tax in the wall tax two dollars, right? If we do dollar fifty fifty million, we have hundred million dollars, and plus some other people are contributing more. 
we may end up having like $500 million to build a wall. Right? So once we build a wall, illegal immigration, illegal migration will stop. Mm -hmm. Right? We have proper migration. We can let people in of the people that we want to let them in. Mm -hmm. The people that we don't want to let in, we can keep them out. Mm -hmm. So this is a world we need to invest. If not, this Bengali problem will always bring us down. Mm -hmm. So the last one is law enforcement. So what do we need to change? Well, there's so many things. And sometimes, you know, not all the time, but sometimes law enforcement in Myanmar can be a joke. Why? Because, you know, so, so many people are swearing because they you, our leaders, people are swearing because, you know, at, uh, on the online, right? If we let people curse and swear and accuse our leader of all the things that they don't do online without penalty, how will other people respect our leaders? Right? You get what I'm trying to say? Let's say I'm your leader, right? And I was a leader of Myanmar, and you keep on saying that I'm a thief, I'm a rapist, I'm a whatever, whatever, whatever they are trying to say. Then, do you think international community will not read the comments? They will know, right? Even your own country people calling you a thief and a crook and, you know, a murderer. Then at the international level, how, they, how will people respect the leader? Right? So that culture has to change. How to change? Because as uh, Lee Guan Yu said, you're not going to change your behavior unless it hurts your pocket. Right? Uh, so so the, 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 the punishment and penalties are so minuscule in Myanmar. Right? Even if I say you are you know, a thief, a crook, and you take bribes or whatever, even though you didn't do it at all, huh? mm -hmm. then if you sue me with a 66D, right, I may get fined for like 5 lakhs or 3 lakhs or even 1 lakhs. How can it be sufficient punishment for me? I will do it again. I will even give you money in advance to swear and curse at you. Right. All right. So what I'm, people. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, what I'm trying to say is that the, the punishment is so minuscule that. So we have to change that. In Singapore, if you do the same to the Lee family, you will get fined. You go and swear at Singapore Prime Minister, you get fined for like $250,000. One shot. Next time, you dare not say anymore. If you don't pay the fine, you sell your house. So the punishment has to be like that. You know, even if you know in Myanmar, also if you have, you know, if you have, if somebody come and occupy your land and chucho, mm -hmm. yeah, some squatters come and occupy land, you want to sue them, you cannot kick them out, you know. They will continue to stay in the house until the judge is over. But even then, you got to go so many steps. So what I'm saying is say, the punishment is so little and so, oh, non-effective that people dare to continue to commit undesirable uh, crimes or undesirable try people continue to exhibit undesirable uh, behaviors so that has to change if not if not our country will never be prosperous we need to have a law and order country right in order to have that you need to have sufficient punishment. For example, like another example I can give, a lot of restaurants are not paying commercial taxes. Right? They, 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 you, know, you go and eat a restaurant, they ask you whether you need a receipt or not. Receipt you pay, they, they stick onto you, then you pay extra tax. So everybody has to pay commercial tax and all the restaurants. Right? They cannot avoid. But these shops are being let go. Nobody is raiding this shop. Nobody is asking this shop to be shut down, these restaurants to be shut down. We should do that. Right? That is the meaning of Law enforcement, right? If there is no crime, I also will not pay tax. Mm -hmm. If I don't get punished, if I'm running a restaurant, mm -hmm. if I don't pay commercial tax, I don't get punished, I will forever not pay commercial tax. Mm -hmm. Right? So that is what is happening. And you, you raid this restaurant, you close down the restaurant, and you publicize that fact. Then nobody will dare to not pay the commercial tax. Yeah, this is just an example, right? Even, you know, so another example, even the criminal offenses, right? I have some cases where some people have stolen some money. Even, uh, you know, so even you are right, you're in the right, some of the judges will depart, de demand money from you, yeah, to make the right decision. Yeah, so that is uh, from the personal experience. You know, some of the uh, police also uh, have behavior Elbow like that. Grease. Oh, I don't know whether elbow grease or whatever, but the, what I'm trying to say is, see, uh, you are a civil servant. You have to do your own job. 
yeah. properly, right? If you don't want to do and you just want to take bribe and don't do anything, why join in the first place? You're destroying the country. Mm. That's, what I, that's the last part. Mm. So, you know, the laws will be there, however beautiful the laws are. Mm. But if the punishment is not enough, mm. if the law is as good as nothing. It is as if there is no law like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. that's why, you know, in Myanmar, the online uh, social media is so rude. Our culture is so degrading and so down the drain compared to countries like Singapore, Malaysia. It is as if their culture is a lot better because there is no swearing at the leaders. There is no cursing at their own prime ministers. Here there, there is. Why? Because the punishment is not there. Mm -hmm. The laws are in the books. Yeah, the laws are there, but the enforcement is not there. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have already discussed uh, five issues. Yeah, uh, The creation, the law, the lion heart, the electric, the wall. So what will be your conclusion? Well, the conclusion as Steve Jobs, you know, Apple founder Steve Jobs, he once said, right, you have to work hard to, to get your thinking clean and simple. Make it clean, make it simple. Just like I've done. Five things only, simple. Simple thinking. And then it is worth, and you try hard to achieve that. And as Steve Jobs say, it is worth in the end because by doing this, you can move mountains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Steve Jobs said. So it got to be like that. So we got to work hard, get these five things going right now. Yeah, within a short period of time, we started. Right? We may make mistakes, but mistakes are part of life. Right, even Lord Buddha made mistakes for six years. He practiced the wrong way. Right, he made a mistake for six years. So then he corrected it. And it's the same thing. We got to start working on it, and you know, and we got to get these five sympathies going with this brief man and woman of Myanmar, so that we, the, the future generation, will get the respect that it deserves in this vicious and cutthroat world of international relations. <laughs> Thank you, Sia. Thank you very much for your insightful discussions. Thank you. You have been watching MITV's special show, Perspectives. Thanks for joining us.